Good afternoon, everyone. This is Trey from Midwest Day Trips here in New Harmony, Indiana, checking out the Working Man's Institute. This is the oldest library in the state of Indiana. It's also a monument to a socialist utopia. So grab your library card, come day tripping with us. This is one of the most unique spots that we have ever stopped at. And I'll say this up front, this place cannot be adequately covered in a six minute video. So we definitely wanna come back here, perhaps for a deep dive. Other than the interesting history of this spa, this is also a fun tourist destination. People like to take weekend getaways here. They'll ride golf carts around town and solicit the small businesses here. The town was established in 1814 by the Harmony Society, who also established two other communities in Pennsylvania. The group's leader, George Rapp, the self-proclaimed Christian prophet, was seeking a place to build a society of his own. What you're seeing is a pretty extensive group of artifacts in the museum. The history of New Harmony coincides with the history of Indiana itself. As the leader of the group, Frederick Rapp, helped frame Indiana's first constitution. The Rappites lay claim to a variety of firsts, such as the first kindergarten in America, the first infant school in America, the first free public school system, and it just goes on. Education was important to William McClure. He created the Working Men's Institute and was a prominent geologist, even holding the distinction of creating the first map of the United States. Robert Owen believed in a quote unquote, new view of society. He pictured communities of about 1,200 people settling on land of 1,000 to 1,500 acres, all living in a single building with a public kitchen and dining halls. He envisioned families having their own private apartments, taking care of their own children until the age of three, at which point the community would assume care of the children. It takes a village, as they say. All right, definitely a cute, cool little place to stop at. I really like the paintings upstairs. Picked up a booklet so I can learn all about New Harmony. We're definitely gonna learn a few things. Let's take a look at one more thing. I don't think I've ever visited a town quite like this one. It's simultaneously quaint and old fashioned while still feeling like a desirable place to live and work and visit for that matter. And here we have the granary. This place dates back to 1818 and was the site of geographic laboratorial investigations. Nowadays, the Rap Owen Granary is often used for wedding receptions and events like that. Back in the day, after Robert Owen purchased the town from the Rapides, this granary was used by William McClure for these geological projects in question. And we have one more place we wanted to check out before we hit the road. We are at the Roofless Church here in New Harmony. Unto thee shall come a golden rose, which represents the risen Christ of glorious majesty and the coming of the millennium, and thus became something of a symbol for the people of this community. This structure right here is actually supposed to resemble an upside down rosebud. It hovers above the statue entitled The Descent of the Holy Spirit, built by Jacques Lipschitz. Remember that golden structure at the front gate? Also his work. The roofless church was dedicated in 1960 and is considered an open air interdenominational church. It was commissioned by Jane Owen, the wife of a descendant of Robert Owen. Celibacy was practiced by the group as they believed that the second coming was imminent and thus the earthly desires and urges were of little use to this society. Definitely one of the most interesting, unique churches I've ever been to. Anyway, that's gonna about do it for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check back all the time for new content. Take care, everyone.